increased, increased, he did something awesome. You know, at the table of Jesus, he says he brings us the banqueting table, a beautiful you, table Jesus. of strength. You, you know, it's on the table of joy is there. Hallelujah, you need joy. There's joy at the table of Jesus today. There's joy. Hallelujah. There's comfort. If you need comfort today, there's comfort at the table of Jesus. There's strength for the weary at the table of Jesus.
But I want to declare over our giving. As we bring today's highest offerings. And over and above giving. We are believing for supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs, better jobs. Checks in the mail. Inheritance. Secure investments. Scholarships. Creative ideas. Finding money. Healing for our spirit, soul, and body. Delivering to the captive. Salvation of lost. And now, according to the Holy Ghost, will be a blessing to others in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for everyone who gives unto you. Let the blessing be upon their hundredfold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I just feel his presence in this place. I just feel his glory in this place. Church, just worship him. Just call his name. I can't call his name to you. I can't call his name to you.
and we give God thanks for you that we have kept you and you have kept me that we did not hear during the pandemic that this one is gone and that one is gone or you hear that I was gone and we give God praise today and today when we call up and Lloyd and you know and the poor young know, is not here you know he's young he's here I'm not caught and during this pandemic, you know, we rarely, rarely go out anywhere. We, unless I'm going somewhere and you jump in the vehicle, we can come back and some people go out. But we give God thanks and we praise God for you that you are here and we thank you for the time you have spent. And we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you, we love you. We just thank God for you. And we thank you for the kind words who gave us a smile. We thank you for that smile. You know who gave us a call even throughout the pandemic. We have even passed the us and um, uh, first lady. They came and they visited us and they, you know, to say that we long to see you and we do appreciate you. Give us a kind word. We appreciate it. We appreciate you, my brother, my sister, and young people. I we mean, I just miss you and um, the family. Jonathan, Susie, um, Matthew, oh, I miss you. You're singing, you're smiling, you always welcome us. And as Sunday morning we came here, as long as we come in contact with you, you always happy to see us. And we praise God for you. And we pray this morning that you will continue in God. I will leave this word with you from Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Guard your heart. Amen. In this time and in this season, guard, guard your heart. Let what your heart is saying, the lips are saying. Let not the lips say something and the heart is saying otherwise. Because God is the intent of your heart. If you love, pro uh, profess love. Amen. If you say something, stand on the word of God. Guard your heart. Why? Because out of the gate of the angels of life. God bless you today. And we, um, today I bring a gift from a pastor, excellent first lady Mimi, and we want to let them know it's not God will reward you, you know, and uh, encouragement, strength, labor, and uh, God will reward you. And uh, Pastor, we thank you, and uh, we pray that you will appreciate this little token. It's not much, but God bless you. It's the heart that comes. We give it to you with a loving, cheerful heart, and we pray that you will. Um, find you with it. God bless you and we thank you for coming throughout this time. And God bless you. We pray for you while you pray for us. We are one in God when we leave this earth. God is coming back. Not for our own church, not for the church that I am, not for any church, but God is coming for his church out of the church. You stand firm in God that when on that last day you make it in heaven, I make it in heaven, and we will rejoice for God. How is everyone feeling? You holding up? I always think like we're so spoiled sometimes, right? In Africa, it's humid. India, India is 105 degrees humidity, and people that have no AC they just come and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you. We didn't expect that. We love you. I want to speak on what? Come back at a time. Yeah, you're always welcome. We didn't have to invite you. We don't need an invitation to family. Okay? I want to speak on what is the destructive power we see all around us. Why do we have all this turmoil going on around the world? It's just, it's just not in the United States, but it's around the world. And so you may ask, why? What is happening? Why is all this coming together? What is the root of all the lawlessness that we see? And the root of the lawlessness is called sin. Sin. Satan's interactive network. You know, as you know me, I was trying to find an acronym for everything. Satan's interactive network. Sometimes as people, we are afraid when we do something, we have, maybe some people, they're afraid that the devil would hear what they say or come and attack them. 
understand one thing, the devil can only be in one place, on one location. He cannot hear you. He doesn't have the ability to hear across the oceans. He cannot hear you unless there's some other part of his regime in an area, otherwise he wouldn't hear. But the thing, the, the, the condition that we see around the world is coming to the lawlessness of the people. In Matthew 24, verse 12 and 13, it says, Because of people breaking the laws and sin being everywhere, the love and the heart of many people will become cold. But the one who stays through to the end will be saved. Now I want to encourage you, don't listen to all the bad news that you hear. Be careful what your what you ears hear. It's better you get into the Word and let the Word be the TV. Let the Word be the radio. Let the Word be the internet. Amen. Get into the Word because when you know the Word, you can prove all things and everything will be shown to you in the clarity of the Word. And so we know that the laws in the mountains and the laws that will increase. When the coming of Antichrist comes in, there will be a lawlessness like never before. Because you know why? Because he will bring control. He will bring the order on earth. But just, uh, just in the beginning till he establishes himself, and then he's going to show it through face. We, number one here, we cannot deny the fact of sin. We cannot deny the fact of sin. The devastation of sin. In Romans 3, 9 to 11, says, Well then, should we conclude that we choose are better than the others? No, not at all, for we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. As the scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise, no one is seeking God. It does not come natural for us to seek God. It doesn't come natural for us to get into prayer and into the word and into fellowship with Jesus. It doesn't come natural to us to, to have interaction with the Holy Spirit. Because it would be natural, it would be easy. But the Bible says the flesh is weak. But the Spirit is always, can we say, willing. Amen. The Spirit is always willing. So that's where I and you come in. We have to make a decision. Either we let our flesh be weak and let the, let the enemy take the over, uh, take the, overpower us in our mind, or we take the control and we say, God, uh, you saved me, I live for you, and I'm going to push forward. Amen. If I don't feel like praying, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray. If I don't feel like reading the scripture, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to read scripture. If I don't feel like going to church, it even happened to me sometimes. I didn't want to come to church because I was tired exhausted, didn't feel well, you know, but every time, and I didn't stay home, but every time I came to church, I felt better than when I didn't come to church. When I came to church, I was rejuvenated, I was lifted up, my spirit revived, and I was feeling so good. I was sick, and I got home, and I was well, amen. I have never come to church in, in the sixth day, and I went home in the sixth day. I always went home in a touch and a healthy state. Amen. You know why? Because I take God. It doesn't take much for me to believe. I take His word literally. You have to explain the word. I see it, what it says, and that's the way I take it. Amen. If it says the Lord is above all my life and I follow Him, that's exactly what it is. I have to figure out life. I have to do things the way I think I should do. I have to do it according to what He wants me to do. Amen. I have to be connection with him because if I'm fighting to my ears towards him, everything he will walk just right and be right. In Psalm 14, verse 2 and 3 says, The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind. The other day I was reading in Job, and when God had a conversation with Job, and he, he just kind of justified or, or, or uh, put Job in his place, and he says, Job, where were you when I formed this earth? So, do you know what animal is going to give birth and where the animal gives birth? God knows everything. God is in control of every birth of an animal here on earth. God is in control of every birth of an adult or a, I mean, a baby here on earth. He is in control over all birth on earth. Amen. That takes a big God. And so we have an understanding that he looks down from heaven. And he looks at all mankind to see if there, if there are any who understand 
and who seek God. You walk with Christ. The destructive power of the enemy wants to overpower you and take you. But you walk with Christ is not unnoticed in earth in, in heaven. Your walk here on earth may be unnoticed to other people. They may don't understand that I may see how you walk in Christian life. But no one thing, heaven keeps record, amen. And God told me down. He's going to gather all men kind to see if there's any who understand and any who see God. All have turned away and all have become corrupt. There's no one who does good, not even one. And if we come by God's grace and mercy, we will be the same way like every other person out there in the world. Because we could not walk on our own strength. It's God's mercy. And we understand, number two, it is needless to minimize the power of sin. We know how the sin, sin works. We know what sin can do. Sin will destroy our life if it allows to. Who's in control of your life? It's not God. It's not the devil. It's you. You make the decisions. If you make the right decisions, then you allow God to be in control of your life. But God cannot be control of your life unless you give him the permission to control your life. And if God doesn't control your life, the sin of this world will control the person's life. There's not either, it's either one or the other. We cannot walk and journey together in the same. So we know sin will destroy lives. And how many people on earth, how many people on earth die prematurely because they get into all kinds of addiction. They, they get involved in sin and sin takes them so far as the same. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It's going to make you pay more than you want to pay. It's going to make you stay longer than you want to stay. Sin is Satan's interactive network. It's like a web. He wants to get everybody into his web. Did you ever watch a spider hang over in a, on, on a window or so? And how the spider watches and as soon as a fly goes in there, it comes and wraps it up and the fly can no longer move because it's, it, it, it's all entangled. That's exactly what the devil wants all of us to get into. A satanic web. But we have overcome by the precious blood of Jesus. Sin will wreck everything we look for. If you look at the people that have gone through, you see so many people in this world that grew up in the church, they walked in the church, they sang in the church, they preached in the church, and all of a sudden, they work and ties them with money, and they were gone. Just to find out, half in their lives, they ended their lives because of drugs or anything else. Sin will take us straight to hell. But praise God that Jesus Christ came to this world. Praise God that he delivered us off all that whole sin and filthiness. Thank God that there's a remedy for sin. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus Christ, the everlasting. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the everlasting. He's there, He's there for you. And so we thank God for He always gives us a remedy to everything we face. If you go to a problem, He has a solution to your problem. If you go to sickness, He has a solution to sickness. Whatever you go through, God has a, a solution to everything. And then thank God that there's a remedy, a remedy for sin. Hallelujah. In Romans 1, 16 says, For I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Don't ever be ashamed of calling yourself a Christian. Don't ever be ashamed of telling somebody the word of God. Don't ever be ashamed of praying for somebody. Because it says here, don't, don't ever be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God. Hallelujah. Want to step into the gospel. Want to step into what God wants you to do. The power of heaven backs you up. And you're going to see the wondrous works of God. It is for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone to believe first for the Jews and also to the Gentiles. You are very special. We are special people, you know. Because God is said, like, forget the Gentiles. I'm going to just stick with the Jews. But he allowed us to come into a relationship far deeper than the Jewish people. We are so special that Jesus laid down his life for us too. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, 5 and 6, it says, For there is one God, hallelujah, one way to heaven, one way to glory, 
There's only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity. Because only one paid the price. His name is Jesus. The man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave us to the world at just the right time. Amen. See, when you see people misunderstanding what's going on, and you see people that confuse out there with what's going on, you have the answer. Amen. Because just in the right time, God placed you in position to speak to people and give them that gift that's everlasting. A gift that you can re-give to other people. His name is Jesus Christ. You can give to everyone the precious gift of Jesus. And the Bible says here, just in the right time, he got gave to the world. Isn't it awesome that you are the one, we are the one that have a gift for everyone out there who is confused. You, those are the people want to do. They don't know it better. They don't know what to do. Because they're under a curse of sin. But we as individuals in the kingdom of God, we can reach out and share the love of Christ. The most powerful thing we have here on earth is actually is the love of God. Amen. You can love somebody, they're going to change. If you love them long enough, they're going to change. And the blood of Jesus is the only thing that can wash away and cleanse us. Because why? Because He loves us just the way we are. He loves you. When you come into the kingdom of God, He didn't say, you have to do this and this and this. He said, just come as you are. He'll clean you, amen. You didn't have to clean yourself and come to the table, no. He'll clean you. He'll wash you. He'll purify you. He'll make it right. Because only the blood of Jesus has the power to make it right. Hebrews 9, 22 says, In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. But with the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. And you may not believe with everybody out there the way they stand. Or the confusion you're going through in the workplace, the stores, wherever you go. It's because they haven't seen the blood of Jesus touching their lives. When the blood of Jesus washes us, it takes all the destructiveness out of our life and it replaces with a love that flows. A love from above, a love we can produce. A love of God that just flows. Now I want to encourage you, and I pray for you, that every one of us will step into a love we have never had before. Rivers of love, waterfalls of love, overflowing waterfalls of love. Love, 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 amen. What is the saddest thing is the church knows everything. But yet the church has an issue of sharing with the unbelievers. We know the beginning, amen. We know the present. We know the future. Keep out in the streets and know. You never know what can happen to you out there. It's uh, the Bible says that harvest is right. The harvest is right. Are you willing to go and share the love with Jesus Christ? Are you willing to go and bring and make a difference? Are you willing to go and be the hands of Jesus? Are you willing to go and be the feet of Jesus? Are you willing to go to be the mouthpiece of the Holy Spirit? For just a time as this, He brought us into the world to be the life changer. Life changers. Jesus needs you. God needs us. We're in his plan. Are you ready to bring a change? Are you ready to love people just the way they are? They may not gonna like you. Love them anyhow. You think that people like Jesus all the time? No. He even says the world will hate you. But Jesus loved them anyhow. Change one life at a time. 
For the love of God, you can change every life. He has put us on a mission. We shouldn't know how long we have here on earth. I personally think we are going to see it in the next decade. I think it's the last decade for the church. That's what I believe. I would say it is this way, but that's what I believe. Because you can see the signs. From what I've determined, I've determined to myself, I said to myself, I wouldn't enter heaven until I'm sure I'm going to see hear my father say, well done, my son, and you're in. And I pray that Jesus will not come too early because I know there's some work to be completed and done. And when that work is done, then I'm ready to go home. Amen. Because I don't want to go into heaven and look back and see what God could have done through me and with me. But I was too busy about life and busy about other things. And I look back and I could see what he would have done and what he gave me to make it happen. Because I was too busy with life. I would never, never complete my task. God gave us everything he can give. And he can give everything he has given us to others. Praise God. Let's stand. I just want you to begin lift just lift your hands towards heaven. You know when you lift your hands towards heaven, you close to the touch of God. When you lift your hands, it's a sign of victory. It's a sign of surrender. Surrender to God, your victory over life. You just talk to Him. Talk to the Lord. Something is waiting all week long just to hear a voice of his son or daughter. Tell him what you love him. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, holy name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we come before you. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
who walk closer with you every day. So close that one day we're just not going to be here anymore. Just like being on the floor. So close with you. In a presence we have never had before. I pray blessings upon everyone that's here today. Let us be directed by you. Yes, Jesus. In our heart and our life belongs to you. Lead us on, King Jesus. We will faithfully serve you all the way, even unto death, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We Hallelujah. thank you that we have been sealed with the precious blood that we belong to the family of God. And I thank you that you work and orchestrate everything in our lives for your glory, for your benefit. Yes, Jesus. And I thank you that you declare and speak and release over this church in the name of all names. The name of Jesus Christ. The everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So